genius for life. Coconut smoothies coming at you. Hello there. Welcome to the lost episode of 15 Minutes of Genius, as you can see down there. This is episode 71. This is really, I'm just trying to get in the center here. This is the first time we've ever done this. We actually accidentally skipped episode 71 uh, a few weeks back, and we just realized that it was never posted. So we're bringing on a very special guest to celebrate this lost episode of episode 71. So before introducing him, big plug to Mark Nicholas, who did these uh, this graphic down here. Uh, looks like some kind of breaking news happening uh, on the bottom. It's like a news item. There he is, Mark Nicholas, Mark and Manhattanbeatstudios.net. You can see a picture of a picture of a picture of a picture of him behind him. <laughs> <laughs> so that's our man who does all the editing, all the productions. He's amazing. Make sure to reach out to him, Mark Nicholas. That's Mark Anna, Manhattan Beach Studios .net. All right. So our guest, without further ado, is Josh Groff. He is the CEO of More Labs. Little blurb about More Labs. They create smart problem-solving supplements to dispatch the daily stressors that slow you down. We promise, they promise, to help you feel better and feel your best so you can do better, do more of what you love. I can't talk today. All right, Josh, how's it going, my man? Hey, what's up, Alex? How are you? The lost Dude, episode. The lost episode. Saved it for <laughs> you. We're like, we got to get a special guest for the lost episode. Man, Josh. that's a lot of pressure. It's like the lost episode, 15 full minutes of genius. I mean, wow, this is, uh, this is go time. Well, the fact that you're having supplements that help deal with stress, uh, I know that you're ready. <laughs> I'm ready for the challenge. 15 minutes of uh, marginally entertaining intellectual conversation. I don't know about genius, but uh, we'll do our best. Exactly. Exactly, man. I'm right there with you. So, all right, let's get into it. Um, I want to hear... You know, you've had an interesting uh, just track record history background in the CPG space. I want to hear more about you before getting into more lab. So tell us about your background, how you got into the space, um, how you found more labs. Just tell us more about the just the story. Sure. Yeah, um, I was a finance major in college and uh, couldn't really find a job at first out of school, but I was working as a bartender. Um, and finally I put my, my resume out to, uh, got, you know, on a monster.com or something of that nature. And I got a hit from Miller brewing company and they ended up giving me a job and they says, well, you know, do you know some finance and marketing stuff, I guess. And you're a bartender kid. So, you know, you have to know beer and you can't be too stuffy. So they, they gave me the, the first kind of job I had in the, the beverage industry. And so, uh, I've just been in it ever since I, I met. Uh, Peter Van Stolk, the founder of Jones Soda, um, after that, and, and ended up uh, hitting it off with him and went and had four great years at Jones. Uh, and then, you know, wanted something a little bit more structured and did uh, some time at Starbucks corporate up in Seattle and, and then went into uh, kind of a boutique private equity firm within the beverage space and have been in bottled water, kombucha, coffee. Uh, and now, um, lucky enough to be part of more labs. And, and I, I guess to answer your question on how I found more labs, I was living in San Jose at the time and, uh, got some kind of marketing blog from, you know, one of the, the big industry, uh, publications. And it talked about, um, engineer, computer engineer solves hangovers or something of that nature was the, the title of the article. I found it pretty mm -hmm. intriguing. And, uh, as I looked into it a little bit more, CSUN who'd founded the company, um, you know, he, I figured he lived in the Bay area. I was living in San Jose and I just, I kind of just sent him a LinkedIn connection and said, Hey, the industry is really small. If you're kind of new to beverages, um, it's pretty small. And if I can ever be of any assistance, just in, in kind of offering, uh, you know, two cents worth of advice, by all means reach out and. He responded right back and, and, you know, gave me a call the next day just to kind of ask about some contractual stuff and, you know, things like building a sales team. And, uh, and we started talking on a, a weekly basis and then a couple of times a week. And then, you know, he wanted me to formally become a, an advisor to the brand, which I did, uh, cause I loved the space. I thought what they were doing was really innovative. I thought it was, uh, really something that was kind of untouched in the industry, which is, I mean, as you know, 
as you're uh, an entrepreneur in this, it, it's, it's hard to, to rise above some of the noise and to create something that's truly different. And I thought they, they'd done that. Um, and so I, uh, came on full time in March of 2019. Um, and then in December took over as CEO here at more labs. And so now we're, uh, we're looking to the future. Love it. It's such an amazing story. And, um, I, I'm a LinkedIn, you know, freak and nerd. So I look at this and I, I have to scroll probably for about 30 or 40 seconds just to get through all the experience that you have with different beverage companies and different financial companies. This is a uh, pretty damn amazing. Uh, so let's Thanks, get man. into, uh, let's get into, uh, into more labs. Let's get into the products. Let's get into how you guys are making a difference, how it's differentiated. So I went to your website. I saw the life hack pack, which has different products like liquid focus and morning recovery. So tell us more about, um, I think, you know, the history of it is that more labs started as 82 labs and you had a one skew pony, which we're familiar with. We had the original for about four years, just one skew, just plain coconut. So you went from yeah. one and then you evolved it to more, uh, no pun, in, I guess, pun intended. Tell us like kind of the, the evolution of the brand from just going from a single SKU and what led more labs to going to a multiple format and multiple uh, flavors and SKUs. Yeah. Yeah. I think when, when CSUN originally started the company with uh, a couple of, of his friends, um, you know, he was, he's an engineer by trade. He wanted to really kind of find a problem and solve for it. And so uh, this space is really popular in Asia, but relatively unknown in the United States. And so, uh, he wanted to bring something that was approachable to a U.S. consumer and then, you know, figure out how far it could go, I, I think. And as he got into it, um, morning recovery was, was thankfully a hit out of the gate. Um, you know, they, we did over 6 million in revenue in the first 12 months, um, just based on some, some great press and, and really a, a great direct to consumer strategy. And so, um, you know, the, the, after that, we really wanted to start thinking about day parts and we wanted to solve the daily stressors of life, not just the negative effects after drinking alcohol, but all the other daily stressors that might slow you down. So whether that's cognitive enhancement, productivity, uh, getting a good night's sleep and more than just falling asleep quickly, but waking up and truly feeling refreshed and ready to go and attack your day. Um, so that's really, you know, as we started to think about that and, and how do we become more relevant to the consumer in different day parts and different usage occasions to find those life hacks that are, are things that there's maybe there's products that aren't solving those, uh, those challenges. That's really where, you know, the evolution came and we started to expand the portfolio a little bit. And, you know, the life hack pack's a great way just for consumers to be able to um, try one or, or two of each of the bottles and, and, you know, great gift item just to kind of sh show their friends or to send to a, a parent or, or a friend as well. And, uh, just a, a good way to kind of sample everything. But, um, ideally, you know, when you mentioned that we, we changed our name from 82 labs to more labs, that change in the name is a reflection of wanting to be more of an overarching brand where you can trust all of our products to help you get more out of life. And we're going to, create this, what we call kind of a life hack section within the store, uh, where people are going to go that go there as a destination and they're going to start to see products that are going to help them solve those stressors. So, um, that was really kind of the, the evolution of, of how we got here. I think if that, if that answers it, but you know, it's been exciting and two of our new products, liquid focus and dream all are still fairly new, but, um, we're getting great consumer traction and, and really excited about the progress that we're seeing. Absolutely. And I think it's a logical um, extension in the line because the people that are buying, you know, whenever you have a line, they're, they're the kids. So whenever you have... Sorry, man. Let me tell them to stay quiet. <laughs> it's all good. Jeez. All good. It's all part of the, uh, you know, the reality of uh, being an entrepreneur from home on a Zoom call or on a, on a video That's call. That's right. Yeah. So it's, exactly. I love it. It's all real. So, but it's cool because what, what makes the, the overarching brand and what you've created below and within the brand is that you knew, you know, that the people that buy morning recovery, your customers want to get life hacks and feel better and deal with the daily challenges of life. So like sleeping better is the other challenge and de-stressing and then also focus 
or other areas that fit right in line with your prime product they already have so i think it was a honestly a genius move for releasing that and the branding is to me like i'm a marketing guy the branding is awesome it's simple it cuts right through and tells you exactly what it is as we just saw on the screen earlier uh you know about a minute ago um so tell us the strategy okay as far as sales you mentioned that in the first 12 months six million in sales that is incredibly impressive when did you start making the jump from just online because you started as d2c right more labs and then started Correct, making yep. the jump to cvs and you know drug convenience which i think is totally the right channel right there on the countertop when you're checking out you know if someone's buying wine they buy morning recovery right there right it makes total sense so tell us about that jump and when you guys made it and what was your plan of attack uh just getting into uh retail and was it was it hard to do or was it pretty seamless um yeah that's uh i feel like it's never easy to to get you know to build any brand at that level so uh or really to to go from making a jump to from one channel to another channel even um you know this brand was different than any brand i've ever worked on in that usually beverage brands that I've been a part of, the first thing you do is go down the street, sell to your local store and start to just, you know, wherever you can drop stuff off in your car and develop some ground swell and then eventually, you know, get a distributor and a chain and move on after that. And then direct to consumer for a lot of brands becomes a bit of an afterthought. And sometimes that's because, you know, you have to solve for a refrigerated product. Sometimes it's, you know, the weight ratio just makes it really inefficient economically, whatever the, the challenges would be. But this brand was interesting because it kind of flipped it a little bit. It was started as a BTC brand, really got some nice traction with a consistently recurring customer base online. And then, you know, in 2018, when I was an advisor at the time, we were talking in, in the board meetings and just kind of figuring out, you know, how do we grow from here? And, and the, the number one thing that we all thought about was 99% of alcohol is still purchased offline versus online. And so we needed to, to truly grow the brand and gain trial and awareness without having to buy a six pack online, but to buy one bottle and give it a shot, we need to be at retail. We need to be to your point when you're coming to the register and you're buying your wine or your beer, you have to kind of reach over us to pay the check and or the, pay the bill. And then you, Oh, what's this? I'm going to, you know, check out my, my morning recovery here and, and grab one. So, um, we wanted to, to stay with a really focused strategy. We wanted to be mile deep inch wide. Um, we started in Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Chicago all those areas chosen for specific reasons. Um, LA is our home, San Francisco, we had a great following with CSUN's tech background and he got a lot of great press there. And then Chicago was, uh, as we looked at search and where it was coming from, it was one of our top search markets. It's a great food and beverage market, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so we started with those and then, you know, then we really hit the streets, started small, started self-delivering, uh, gained some groundswell enough that we could get into some kind of a, of a, a minimum amount of stores and then we could go attract a distributor. Uh, which we did. And then, you know, from there we could go and, and get a small mom and pop chain to uh, a small C store chain to a regional grocery chain to Whole Foods to Safeway, Walmart, and, you know, beyond. So we're trying to just go deep in those markets, slowly build up through the channels, uh, continue to just build the brand in the right way. Uh, and then take that story once we've really created something successful and now we can go and take that to other markets and replicate it and say, look at what we did in San Francisco. Look at what we're doing in Chicago. Look at what we're trying to do here now in, in you know, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, Baltimore, those kind of areas. So, um, you know, the nice thing is, is that we've been lucky with morning recovery, at least, uh, because we have a little bit more data in, in terms of the, the retail environment, but morning you buy alcohol everywhere you buy it at c stores drug stores grocery stores club stores you know you name it you're going to buy your alcohol there and it's a, a category that you know doesn't see much recession and and so um we've been lucky that that we we see strong sales in different regions whether it's kind of upscale downscale rural or urban uh and so we're really just trying to capitalize on that now and and do it in the right strategic smart way because this you know as you know this business can get really expensive if you kind of let the expenses get out of control so we're trying to do it in a a really smart way um and just keep kind of building brick by brick and and that's what we've been up to so you know 2019 uh we were in around 800 to 1000 brick and mortar stores um today we're in just over 20,000 hmm. um wow. we're in we're in Canada um we just got uh, Health Canada approval, so we've been we went into Canada in a big way. We got into Seven Eleven nationally in Canada and, and Circle K. 
Mm -hmm. uh, we're eyeballing Europe now and, you know, just looking at some, some other options. So it's, it's been, it's been exciting. I mean, we have a long way to go and, and, you know, we're, we run into the same challenges that, that every brand has, but we're just, uh, we're having fun. It's, it's a fun industry. I mean, that's what I love about it. You know, it's uh, you can't take it too seriously because you're, you're just out there having fun and working with people that, you know, and, and trying to just, you know, build the brand in any way you can. It's, it's great. Exactly. You guys have done such an amazing job with everything from, I mean, usually some brands get like brands get one or two things, right? Maybe they get the packaging, right. And, uh, they get the formula, right. Or something you guys, or they get the distribution right, but then the packaging's not right. Um, you guys have been able to kind of align all those stars, which is very rare for a brand to do, to get the right place, right time, the right category, there's demand there, distribution, packaging, formulation. Now you guys have worked very hard on the formula side to make sure that it tastes like pleasant and good when you're taking a shot. I've tasted it through the evolutions and it's just gotten better <laughs> and better and better. I remember having it. We, we appreciate your patience. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. That should, that should be on the back of the bottle. Like, thank you for sticking with us. We appreciate your patience. And this, bottle you know, that, is that one you had six months better. ago, Yeah, <laughs> that one you had six months ago, dot, 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 just kidding. Try this. One. <laughs> I remember having the one that was almost like ceramic or something. <laughs> yeah, and, right, uh, yeah. you know, Susanna gave it to me. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. it's a friend of mine and, you know, she's a big fan of morning recovery. And so, and we both know Susanna. So she gave, she gave me a shot. It was uh, ceramic. I was actually afraid to freaking drop it. Like it was going to break. And right. uh, I remember having it and I'm like, it's functional, it works, but the taste could improve. And then obviously you guys yeah. got a lot of consumer feedback, you reiterated, and then here you are today. I wanted to ask you, um, because brands always struggle with where should I go for retail, right? Where should I focus? Where should I put my money? Where should I put my marketing and support? And again, uh, uh, you can shed more light on this, but um, like for Genius Juice, we're big in more of the mass market Mulo and also natural sprouts, whole foods, Albertsons, target Costco, right? Like those five or six can probably drive us, uh, all the way, you know, yeah. to an exit with other regional natural chains, right. That are more local for you guys. Yep. It seems like the velocity is more crazy and like better in like in convenience and either drug stores or liquor stores. So um, is that the case with your brand versus like a Whole Foods or like more of a mass market or conventional store? Um, you know, surprisingly, it's not. We actually, well, we, we love to see, um, we love the numbers of how many outlets there are within drug and convenience. I mean, you think about 150,000 convenience stores, uh, 30,000 plus drug stores, there's just a ton of outlets, which has been great. And our numbers, don't get me wrong, are, are, are good when you look at the relative turns of other products within those channels. So we don't really, we try not to think about it, or at least I don't think about it as um, how do we compare necessarily on a drugstore, CVS or a Walgreens compared to a Whole Foods. I look at, at it as how, does, how, do we com how do we do it CVS versus Walgreens? And how do we do it Sprouts versus Whole Foods? And what do those losses look like? You, we're not that different than your product in that I bet we're not in Costco. I mean, congrats to you. Huge congrats for going to Costco. That's a game changer. Thank you. It only, um, only took five but, years. That's it. Right. Okay, good. So this is good for people that watch your show to understand the, 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 the amount of pain and blood that you must you know put into this to get Costco. So we're not in Costco. We've never approached them. We're, we're far off from that, but um, but in terms of Whole Foods, I mean, they're, it's our top velocity chain, believe it or not. I really? Mean, people are, yeah, it's just, and it, and it was with, when I worked in kombucha, it was our top chain. When I worked in coffee, it was our top chain. You know, it's, it's uh, the people there go, uh, great foot traffic, go to buy, they're willing to explore and try new things. And, and it's still, um, it, it's different. It's interesting. You would think that, that maybe we would see a shift in, in terms of where those velocities come from, but. Yeah, it's very similar to your brand. Very similar. It's very consistent. So, where where is where is More Labs merchandise? Are they always at the check stand in Whole Foods or Sprouts? 
Well, we're technically, we come in through the whole body department. So, oh. you know, that's the center store with all the, everything from vitamins to lotions and ointments and functional shots. But, you know, what's brilliant and fun about Whole Foods is they're, those departments work better with each other than any chain I've ever seen. So if, you know, the whole body, if you walk in and have a great conversation with the whole body manager or assistant department manager, and you tell them, Hey, really morning recovery, this is it's, we're coming up on a great holiday here that it's going to be a big drinking thing. And they walk you over to the, the liquor manager or the bar, the beer manager and say, Hey, what do you, what do you think about putting up a, a, a side stack or a corner, like a side display or something on the end cap for morning recovery? you don't get a lot of pushback because they're, those teams really work well together. And so we've been really fortunate. Um, we work with some great uh, broker partners as well. And, and that have been really helpful, but even though we're, we have a home spot in the whole body department, but 95% of the stores, we either have a product on the register or mm -hmm. near the alcohol. Makes perfect sense. Really uh, very brilliant uh, merchandising, right? We're getting double placed uh, because yeah, I see this as a definite, like check stand product, right? Where people, it's more impulsive. They know they're going out that night or they need something right away because they feel a certain way. They feel slow or they feel like they can't focus. And they look at it and say, I feel like crap today. I need to drink this so that I can lift myself. And, um, you know, especially like, you know, it's, it's amazing because I see it. There's more competition at a Whole Foods and Sprouts. Like in the supplement section, there's thousands of brands that are in there. And the fact that you guys are popping out and people are seeing it and buying it and you're getting more velocity there versus like a liquor store where, you know, my, my friend owns a liquor store actually in Redondo Beach. Um, some, Which one? Uh, it is called, um, oh my God, VIP Liquors in Redondo Beach. Okay. Yeah, it's yep. on, it's on, um, it's on a Torrance Boulevard about maybe like half a mile from the pier. I can walk there. And okay. I, I literally went in there to buy kombucha. I was not buying mm -hmm. liquor. I actually don't drink <laughs> too much. I, I'm pretty okay. you know, only for special occasions like wine or something. But I went in there just and I became friends with the owner. Um, he's a young, you know, he's in his 20s and he owns the place and he was running the place. And it was four years ago, three and a half, four years ago. He's like, look what I just got. Have you heard of this brand? You know, uh, it was, you know, more, it had M-O-R-E on the front, mm -hmm. like morning recovery. And, and then, so anyway, that was when I saw the ceramic bottles. And, right. um, but anyway, it's there like right on the check stand. Like you literally see it. And if the owner of the liquor store or general manager likes it and gets high margin from it, they're going to be pushing it to every customer that buys liquor. So that, that, that's amazing yeah. that you're, you're still cranking at those, but doing great volume in the bigger chains where there's a lot more noise, a lot more products, a lot more to choose from. So that's, that, that really, uh, tells a lot about your brand. So, um, really good stuff, man. And our team and the team and the team. Yeah. I would just say like, I mean, it's a grind, you know, and I would say our team hustles their butts off. Oh my God. I love it. You know, it's, uh, you know tell. how it is. I mean, it, it's, it's a war out there and it, it's, uh, we've just have a, an amazing team. So exactly. You guys, yeah. you know, uh, with your leadership and the, all the sales managers, you have like foot soldiers that are just going out there, you know, uh, street soldiers, I call them actually just every day. And there's so much ground to cover, right? There's so many, there's so much opportunity with more labs, with all these liquor stores and convenience stores, and they're all like independently owned, right? So you have to hit yeah. so many of them. You can't just talk to one buyer and get into a thousand. You have to go store by store That's by right. store, you know? <laughs> yep. so, yeah. Yeah. Got to know the ground game. That's for sure. And have, have uh, incredible people that are passionate and smart. Exactly. I love this, man. I, I wish we could talk more. You know, uh, we are running, uh, I keep on, you know, pun intended. So uh, running out of time, uh, if someone wants to buy your product, just morelabs.com, right? Yep. Morelabs.com. Absolutely. All right. And we're on Amazon. Awesome. Awesome. Love it. All right. So let's get into our next segment, which is called Rapid Fire Questions. Rapid Fire Questions. All right. Okay. Beat of sweat. Beat of sweat just drips <laughs> down my head. You're, you're, uh, you are focused. You're energetic. And by the way, um, one thing that I thought of, I'm just going to say it on the air here. We should, we need to do a giveaway um, for morning recovery and genius because we're a great post 
like were a great post hangover cure drink you know just coconut the water and the yeah. meat blended and then obviously we have electrolytes drinks. and oh yeah yeah so we should do it like maybe like new year's eve or something or new year's day like the the most heaviest yes. night of drinking and Absolutely. do a giveaway with us and maybe one more brand like a coconut water brand or something that just still that kind of emphasizes how to recover after like a heavy night of drinking so anyway there you go more to come on that more, we'll get, the we'll more get genius giveaway I the like more it. the more genius giveaway dude that that was off the top of your head that was off the top of your freaking yeah. head that's amazing <laughs> marketing genius all right rapid so. fire <laughs> rapid fire all right so here we go ask a bunch of questions get a bunch of answers you ready i'm ready in sync or backstreet boys um backstreet backstreet's back all right first thing you do it's when you wake up um yeah the usual uh everybody nowadays rolls over and grabs their phone which i hate um but yeah <laughs> but then i will say just to get to that's the honest answer but then i i usually i go for a run every day right on me too yeah i love it all right how, how many miles are you doing five five very that's what are you not... doing you look like you're in shape you're yeah, probably I do. doing more than that. I was, I was doing five for a while and then I'm training for like marathons and stuff and different events. Nice. So, um, I am running an average of about 10, but not Amazing. every day because my joints hurt sometimes. So I have to take a day off every once in a while. Uh, okay. when I run 15, gonna... it destroys me. So I, I love running 15, you know, the whole theme of 15. Um, right. but the next day you feel it no matter what yeah. I, I am taking vital, vital proteins though, with the collagen, which is really helping my joints. So nice. yeah, yeah shout out. out 2399 for a big tub at Costco. So you can't beat that. So can't beat that. <laughs> it tastes good. Also, it tastes good with genius. If you blend it in, you know, it's actually really I'll good. Bet. All right. So, uh, let's get back on it. Uh, movie you can watch on unlimited amount of times. Goodfellas. Love that movie. It's like, uh, hey, Tommy. Never gets cold. I, I love the scene where it's uh, they're in the bar and there's the guy that's untouchable and then they kill him because he mm -hmm. he uh, he uh, basically uh, embarrassed and like talked down to Tommy, you know, Joe yeah, Pesci's character. Go get your shine box. Go get, you, go get your shine box, you know. He make yeah. your shoes look like freaking mirrors, you know. <laughs> my, my favorite my favorite part of that movie, for some reason, is uh, the first time that Robert De Niro comes in, and he's, it's when, you know, Ray Liotta's character is really young, and De Niro yeah. just comes in, and, and, like, he put 100 in the pocket of the doorman just for opening the door, you know, like, just like he's throwing <laughs> around money, and they're all like, yeah, it's, just, it's great exactly oh man we can go on and on about that yeah it's i've watched it probably probably 50 to 55 times like i'm serious <laughs> it's it's yeah. like on tv My everyday or, movie i could watch every, it every day for sure all right so uh song you can listen to an unlimited amount of times oh man um there's several songs probably from Daft Punk that, that I don't even own a Daft Punk album, but I could listen to like every time it comes on, it just starts making you bounce or uh, Free Bird by Leonard Skinner. Right, right on. Uh, have you listened to the Tron soundtrack, Daft Punk? Yes. Yeah. Amazing. 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 Yeah. Leonard Skinner, my favorite. I love Free Bird. My favorite is Simple Man. That's like yeah. YouTube live. They're and the fact that the uh, the brother right the, they died in the in the plane crash the one, yeah. the original ma band members the brother of the leads the, the original singer took over and he has like almost yeah. the same exact voice as him so what's his name like bobby van zan or something like that but yeah incredible yeah exactly man a lot of similar interests here geniuses think alike all right so favorite sport to watch um live hockey on tv um either soccer or football love it i love hockey yeah kings big kings fan here so i saw the ducks win the cup in 2008 or i think it was 2007 so well who's your team nice. is it is it uh where are you uh, originally my, from my family's all from pennsylvania so i'm a flyers fan flyers very cool not not the penguins not a pits we, we live closer to philly and just never never were pittsburgh fans so um yeah flyers it is love it 
Uh, Zoom, Microsoft Teams, or Google Meet? Google Meet. Love it. Free. It's free. And yeah, free. <laughs> free and free. <laughs> what is your spirit animal? Man. Um, there, what was that show where uh, someone has to like describe their spirit animal and they said, I don't know, maybe like a, a bear with the head of an eagle or something. <laughs> it was just a random kind of mix of that. It's kind of, kind of the way I feel like I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm like a dog uh, kind of like neck down, but on top, I don't know, maybe just an ape or something. I'm kind of a weird hybrid animal. Okay, a, a dape, uh, a dog and an a ape. A dape. A dape. Right, yeah, there you go. A dap, yeah, something. <laughs> All right, window seat or aisle seat on an airplane? Aisle, 100%. Peanut butter or almond butter or neither? Um, peanut butter, creamy, not chunky. Right on. Omnivore, flexitarian, vegetarian, or vegan? Um, aspiring... Uh, vegetarian, but omnivore. I love these answers. They're like super creative and, and different. <laughs> Cold weather or hot weather? I'm going to go, man, see, I, four years ago, I would have said cold weather 100%, but now right. that I've lived in California, like I, I got to say hot weather. Got to say uh, it. Got to do it. pains me to say that. It's great. It's like Dana Carvey with like Bush, like got to do it. Gotta do it. Gotta do it. You gotta do it. <laughs> so LeBron James or MJ? MJ. Of course. Yeah, you mean you're just from... my age, purely my age. Yeah, we're in, we're in that generation, man. So yeah, I'm the same yeah. way, man. So uh, ginger or turmeric? You know, it's funny. Today I actually had, um, we were testing out some new stuff and we were playing around with curcumin, uh, which is mm -hmm. like the byproduct of, of turmeric. And I was like, oh, I can get into this. And I'm still a ginger guy. I think just, I'm going to go ginger. I, I just think it's so much more versatile. Yeah. It goes better with different juices and uh, cooking and uh, turmeric. Dressings is, and yeah. Yeah. Turmeric's very, very potent and powerful. It's kind of polarizing to me. So it, yeah, I, I purely I purely drink it only for the benefits, but I don't enjoy the taste at all. So, favorite food or drink? If you're stuck on a deserted island, you cannot say. Give me a sec. Wait for it. You cannot say genius juice. You cannot say more. More labs. You cannot say Tenzo brew do, uh, brew doctor kombucha Stumptown. <laughs> You cannot say, uh, what are the other experiences here? It's loading. Niagara bottling. You cannot say anything from Starbucks. Jones soda. Yeah. Can't say any of those. <laughs> Fa deserted island food. Or drink. Um, man, I, or drink. I'm, I'm just, I'm on the desert island cooking burgers, I think. Cooking I'm, burgers, man. There's got to be a grill you know, somewhere on that island. Yeah, just a grill. Make a grill out of some some palm or I don't know what do you, you make it out of some bamboo. Make a little bamboo grill and just you know cooking burgers. Yeah, I can see so you I'm like doing. Castaway too. You know, uh, the revenge <laughs> yeah. of the burgers. You know, I oh, made right. fire. Oh. <laughs> you know, <laughs> only like instead of actually losing weight like he did, I just gain weight the whole yeah. time. <laughs> exactly. so, so they they find me five years later and I'm 300 pounds. Like, oh my God. You can just float home. You don't even need a boat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Could do, that's how I was rescued. Exactly, exactly. He's floated across all the way back to the coast of California. <laughs> the story of the year. All right, so that is Rapid Fire Questions with Josh Groff. He is the... Rapid Fire. Okay, the, the applause. There you go. Right. It's getting late. We're getting a little loopy over here. We need that lick. Need to get that liquid focus for our producer, for Mark. I'm just busting your balls, sorry. So, uh, yeah, so that is, uh, uh, he is a CEO of More Labs, which is an awesome, awesome company, and they're growing. So, yeah, this is episode 71. It is the lost episode. How do you feel being our first guest on a lost episode that we skipped, 71? How does it feel right now? This is yeah, this is a uh, pretty, uh, what an honor. I feel like we, uh, I just came out and, uh, out of a cave after five years and have been discovered. This So I appreciate, uh, you bestowing the lost episode on me, Alex. Thank you. Love it. Love it. Well, Josh humbled an honor to have you on this episode and uh, a big fan of you, big fan of more labs and everything you've done. So huge congrats on everything you've accomplished, like in your career and with more labs. 
Thanks, Alex. Just getting started. We really appreciate it. Give me a call, okay? You got it, my friend. All right. Have a good night. All right. That is episode, the lost episode, L-O-S-T, lost episode, uh, 71 of 15 Minutes of Genius. That was Josh Groff. He's a CEO of More Labs. Pick it up. CVS, Sprouts, Whole Foods, you name it. They're there. Anywhere where there's liquor, they're there as a recovery. And make sure to go online, morelabs.com, for their life hack pack. So again, episode 71, lost episode in the books. Make sure to uh, reach out also to Mark Nicholas, markanamahamutstudios.net. He is our awesome producer that makes great episodes and makes me look great, sound great, and makes me sound like a genius. I'm not really a genius. That's, you know, it's a secret. I'm letting it out. All right. So, uh, again, thank you for joining us. And one last thing, stay genius, my friend. Genius for life. Coconut smoothies coming at you.